Hi there guys, it's Lee here for Armand Blocks. Welcome back to another video. So recently I uploaded some videos uh, showing you the performance and the characteristics of my new uh, graphics cards, uh, which I purchased specifically for the purpose of uh, Ethereum mining. Um, so the graphics cards were some RX 470s, uh, four gigabyte versions, and there was actually the uh, Sapphire branded cards, um, not the Nitro ones, there was actually more the reference uh, style design. Um, so I've done some installation videos of those and showed you some of the basic performance uh, characteristics. Um, and basically out of the box I was getting 22 mega hashes per second mining uh, Ethereum, which is the uh, Etash uh, algorithm. Uh, going on from that, quite a few people mentioned, or I was already aware of actually, um, that you could do like a BIOS modification. And what the BIOS, uh, BIOS modification sort of um, alluded to was um, that you were going to get much better mining performance from the actual graphics cards um, in the region of about 28 mega hashes. Um, some people was talking in that kind of region. So that sounded really promising. Um, anyway, I, I went ahead, I've done some research and find out exactly how to do that um, BIOS modification. And um, I performed the BIOS modification on one of my graphics cards. And you can see on the screen sort of um, in front of you, uh, we've got the actual uh, Claymore's uh, Ethereum miner here running. And you can actually see two of the actual uh, GPUs. So you can see GPU zero is running just over 28 mega hashes, and that goes all the way through. Um, it's been running basically all day now, and the total time is um, eight hours and 28. And then we've got GPU one, which is the one that's been not flashed, um, and that's running at 22 mega hashes. So yeah, GPU one is basically stuck at 22, and the BIOS model one is running at 28 mega hashes. So you're gonna get um, you know, a six mega hash uh, increase in performance. And there's some other tweaks that you can do as well. Um, this should basically reduce the actual um, heat and power draw of the car as well slightly. Um, but I'm not gonna to focus too much on that. This is really just more of a performance um, focused video. So let's get into it. So I'm on the actual Mac now, and the sort of the smaller screen is actually the Windows 10 machine um, on a different site or in a different location um, but this is where I'm going to be doing the actual um, BIOS mod so like I say I've already modified one of the BIOSes and we're going to be doing the other one now so I'll take you through the whole process so in order to do the actual BIOS uh, modification on your graphics card and by the way just before I sort of um, go any further uh, this BIOS modification um, is not that complicated but you can um, run into issues with it it is possible for you basically to wreck your graphics card. So, you know, word of warning, before you actually start this process, consider that that is always a risk. Um, there shouldn't be any problems, but, you know, that is something to make you aware of. If you flash your card and it goes wrong, basically you're going to end up with a completely dead card. Um, so that's just a word of warning for you. I'm not going to take any responsibility for um, any damaged calls. Okay, so that little disclaimer out of the way, let's move on. So you're going to need a couple of tools to carry out this uh, BIOS modification for your RX 470. So the tools that you're going to need is, uh, and I'll put all the links in the description. So the tools that you're going to need is uh, GPU Z. You're going to need ATI Flash or ATI Win Flash to be more specific. Uh, and you're going to need the Polaris BIOS editor. In addition to that, I'd also recommend Sapphire Tricks which is useful for overclocking your card and it also shows uh, various other functions as well. We'll come back to that later. So they're the four things that you can need. Um, and I'll, like I say, I'll put a link in the description for each one of those. So the first thing that we need to do is to actually back up the current BIOS of our graphics card. So to do that, we use uh, GPU Z. And this time we're gonna select our other graphics card and we are gonna back it up. I'm just going to save it as uh, Ellesmere ROM. I know what the reference is and it's going to be saved to the desktop. So I'm just going to close that now. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the Polaris BIOS editor. You're going to get a disclaimer, uh, a notification just to say that's be careful when you're modifying your BIOS. Acknowledge that. So then we're gonna go, it opens up blank as default. So click open and we select the ROM that we want to use or modify. So we're gonna click on that Ellesmere.rom, which is the modifier, the bias for our RX 470. 
you're going to get a warning now that says that the file size is less than 512 on the RX 470s or at least the one that I have it's actually a 256 kilobyte ROM and so that's perfectly normal so just acknowledge that okay and next to the open and save you've got some green text up there that's just, that's like just some checksum information so basically any green text up there is good information um, if you ha shows any red text then go back and resave your BIOS don't modify it and then save it um, so yeah just look for the green text there so the part that we're going to be focusing on it's obviously got lots of different information for your actual BIOS um, uh, GPU core timings power and all sorts of other stuff the part that we're focusing on is the timing section uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to copy you see the timing so we've got this 1500 megahertz timing and it starts triple seven what we're going to be doing is we're going to be copying this timing they call it a strap so we're going to be copying this box here into the 1625 1750 and 2000 areas so we just need to select the box the 1500 box and then control the name to select all and then control and C to copy it and then what we're going to do is in each one of these boxes we're just going to select the whole lot and delete it and then we're going to paste our 1500 timing into sorry each one of the new boxes sorry that's my fault wrong key yeah so obviously just control and C to copy and control and V to paste little bit different because um, I'm on the Mac so I have to remember the correct keys okay so that's it so what we've done is we've copied our 1500 timing into the bottom three boxes so each one of the other timing so all these four timings now share or sorry that all four clock speeds now share the same timing profile and it's the timing profile that's basically gonna allow you to get the best performance uh, from the graphics card so I'm just sort of scrolling back I just want to make sure that I've definitely uh, pasted each one properly you might want to do this as well okay so we've copied 1500 into each one of the three boxes and that's basically it there is other modifications that you can do um, in terms of changing like the uh, core power voltage memory voltage um, things like that but I'm not going to go into any of those other parts uh, during this video and keep it quite simple so what we want to do is now we're going to save it this is going to be our modified BIOS so we're going to click save uh, I'll click the original and then I'll just do just change the file name so actually I won't I'll call it something else I'll tell you why in a moment uh, RX470 modded we'll call it and we'll just click save and that's that so we're now finished with the Polaris BIOS editor. Um, the reason why I saved it is just a simple file name. You don't want too many dashes and spaces, is because we're going to be using uh, the ATR WinFlash tool. And um, if the file name's long and complicated, it's quite difficult to type. So just keep it really simple. But obviously, you know, make a note to yourself that it is actually the modified version. Okay, so next up, we're going to be doing the actual uh, flashing. So we've got our original BIOS and we've got our modded version. Um, so now we're going to do the actual flashing process. So we're going to be using ATR WinFlash and um, for simplicity um, extract it to a folder and then just copy the whole lot, select it, copy it and then copy it to a folder on your C drive. Um, I've already done this so I've got a folder called Flash so you know just right click create a new folder call it Flash and then copy the whole WinFlash into there the other thing that you want to copy into there as well is your actual modded uh, ROM so copy that into the folder so I'm just going to drag that modified file from the desktop into the flash folder as well okay right the next thing we need to do is open up a command window so what we need to do is if you press uh, control alt and delete and then open up task manager um, I need to do it a little bit different because I'm remotely logged in so go to task manager then you want to go to file and then run new task where it says open just type cmd as it's already there cmd 
and then you want to click the checkbox to create this task with administrator privileges you must do this so open the command window with admin privileges click OK um, now we've got a command window and from here we can do the rest of the actual flash sorry just getting a drink there okay so it's going to start with your probably your window system folder so if you type cd uh, space backslash it takes us to the C and then we want to type CD space flash and it will open up our flash folder okay and then from here we're basically in the correct folder we can close out of a task manager box there as well so we want to type ATI win flash spaced and then you want to dash F then you want dash P zero, which will be the first um, device in your system. You can go through um, different devices, so they start at zero and one, two, three, four, etc. So make sure you flash the correct card in the correct sort of order. Um, yeah, like I say, device zero should be the first card or the first slot of your um, PCI Express graphics uh, ports. But um, yeah, double check that. Um, and then you want the actual uh, file name. So it's um, rx470mo-modded.rom. So ATR wins flash space uh, hyphen f space hyphen p space zero for device zero. And then um, yeah, the, your modded file name. So rx470mo-modded.rom and then press enter. It'll come up with a bar like this. Uh, it should take about 30 seconds to go through. Um, you need admin privileges like I say we've already gone through. If you don't, a little notification box will pop up and it, but it actually pops up behind this window so it's quite difficult to see. So yeah, just make sure you start this um, command window with admin privileges. Okay, so that's actually uh, completed. Uh, one other thing I should have actually done, um, and I would recommend to you guys to do uh, as well, is um, close down any um, uh, programs that are actually interacting with your graphics card. You can do it alongside it, but for the best results, I would close it. So, um, yeah, so if you've got like tricks or afterburner, anything like that, obviously your mining programs, you want to close all that down first. Um, I think I did actually have it everything closed. Old oh, tricks was running. Should have closed that as well, really. But anyway, you're going to get a notification like this, which says that it's basically been done. And all you need to do is restart your machine um, to complete the process. So we're going to do that now. So just close this window. Okay, so our machine has just restarted. Let's continue on. Uh, I'm just going to maximize that. So focus a little bit. So let's start our miner and we'll just sort of show you the kind of a uh, regular performance. So I'm using the uh, Claymore Dual Ethereum Miner 6.1. Just close that background window. Uh, just while that's loading, actually I'll give it an extra second because I don't, I wanted to show you tricks but I'll give it a moment just to so say it doesn't interfere with it. Okay, so we can see that GPU zero is actually running a little bit slower than it was before, but GPU one, which is the one that we've actually modified, is now running at 24, basically 25 mega hashes. So we could leave that as it is, but we can do a little bit further tweaking. So now I'm gonna open up uh, Sapphire Tricks, and we'll just adjust the actual uh, clock speeds and also the fan speeds to keep the actual cards cool. Uh, where I actually have this mining rig, it's actually quite hot in there, so 
just going to make a slight adjustment on that. You can see they're actually um, already quite hot. So let's make sure I've got the right card. So of these two cards, um, if you would have seen in my previous videos, one of them for some reason um, throttles under high load and the other one works well basically fine. Um, so that means that I have to adjust the power limit on one of them, but because they're both identical cards, it's kind of difficult to identify which one is which sometimes. Uh, yeah, so this one is the one that's throttling. So you can see there the clock speed is set to 1216, but it's actually throttling. Um, but anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'll set the uh, clock speeds to diff uh, the same. So the settings that I found worked well for me was um, 1100 for the core clock. And I believe I had it at um, 1900, maybe 1950 now. Can't quite remember. I might have to go back and uh, double check that. Um, and also I need to increase the uh, power limit up to 25%. Uh, uh, you probably won't have to adjust the power limit on your card um, and I think I'm only going to have to do it on this one card. So this is the card that was running at 28 mega hashes before. So 1900 or was it 1950? I don't know. Anyway, let's uh, go with this. Okay, so sorry about that, just had to pause the video there uh, because I couldn't remember exactly what I had set for my original clock speeds to get the best performance. So I just had to do a little bit of uh, tinkering backwards and forth uh, just to kind of optimize the actual settings. So the final settings that I've got, and you might find that this works for you or maybe you might want to tinker with it a little bit either way. So I've got 1100 core clock and a memory clock of 2000. Although I'm pretty sure earlier on the memory clock, I think I had it running at 1950 and was getting similar sort of results. So have a play around in this kind of a ballpark kind of area. So now we're getting across two cards. It's just gone down again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just gone down again a little bit, but we was getting a 28 um, cache on the first card and the second card, which is a newly um, modified one, uh, 27.4. So I think with a bit of tweaking, we should probably get that second one um, over 28 mega hashes as well. Um, but of course, that's gonna take a little bit of time to get that done. So that's about it for this video. Um, hopefully you found this uh, useful and informative. If you have, please give it a like and um, you know, let me know how you're getting on in the actual comments area below. Um, I'd love to hear exactly what you guys are doing. Of course, if you have any sort of uh, questions or comments, anything like that, you can leave a comment uh, down below as well and I'll be sure to get back to you guys um, as I often do. So that's it for this one. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on the next video.